it's all good. <laughs> okay, here we are at the Los Angeles Fleet Week. I'd like to welcome Captain Shoebaker to town. He brought this incredible uh, helicopter, this aircraft. That's uh, the AH-1Z. Uh, yes, sir. From the Vipers, right? Is that Correct. the name of your unit? Uh, so I'm just going to let you talk a little bit about introduce yourself, talk a little bit about the, the aircraft, and then we'll do a little walk around too. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here. So as you mentioned, I'm Captain Shoemaker with HMLA 169 out of Camp Pendleton, and uh, we fly the Cobra as well as the Huey. Uh, so I am a Cobra pilot and been a Cobra pilot for the last three years. So I'll quickly talk about some of the features on the Cobra, and then we'll answer any questions that you might have. Uh, so as mentioned, the AH-1Z, uh, it is the newest and most upgraded version of the Cobra. Uh, it came out within the last 10 years and we just uh, accepted our last couple within the last two years. So it is the newest and most upgraded version of the aircraft. Some key differences you can see, we have a four-bladed rotor system versus the former uh, Whiskey, which was a two-bladed rotor system. And then uh, our main mission, we have a lot of missions, but I would say close air support and supporting the, gro the ground marines is our number one mission. So as you can see, we have a lot of different weapon systems uh, that we carry. So starting off in the front, we have the M197, which is a three-barreled Gatling gun. Uh, we carry up to 652 rounds with a rate of fire of 650 rounds per minute. So we can go through it pretty quickly. It's 20 millimeter. Our other big piece of equipment is our FLIR. So we have uh, TV as well as uh, IR, so we can see at night uh, the differences in temperature. And then going on to the left-hand side, you'll see we have, uh, we carry both rockets and missiles. So we can carry guided and unguided rockets, as well as the Hellfire missile and the newest JAGA missile. And then finally, we can also carry air-to-air -air missiles. So the Sidewinder, which you would typically see on a fixed-wing jet, we can carry one on each side, and that's used for air-to-air. And then if you have any other questions, we can talk about specific stuff. Yeah, very good. I didn't hear you real well with the uh, with the helicopter, but yeah, let's. Uh, we, we can talk about the weapon system. Yeah, we can talk about it. Again. We talked a little bit about yeah, that, but I couldn't quite hear what you're saying. Uh, uh, the, so we have the three uh, main things on this side. So Lao Seven, which holds our Sidewinder, so we can carry one on each side. That's the air-to-air -air missile, so we can use it against fixed-wing aircraft or as well as uh, rotary-wing aircraft, and we do train for that. Uh, next, we have our rocket pod. We have two types. We have the 61 and the 68. This is a 68, so it's a smaller, uh, holds seven. And then this one's a longer pod because we carry two, two types of rockets, guided and unguided. So the uh, guided rockets, they're a little bit longer. They have a, a guidance section strapped onto it and they'll follow laser energy uh, to the target, uh, which we use off of the, uh, the FLIR, that ball mm -hmm. in the front of the aircraft has a, a laser in it. Next we have uh, our Hellfire and our Jagum. So Hellfire missile used for buildings, caves, bridges, as well as uh, armor. Uh, and it can pretty much take out any tank right now on the battlefield. It's a very effective weapon. We've been using it for a while and we'll continue to use it just because of how effective it is. Next we have the Jagum, Joint Air Ground Missile. It's our newest weapon we have right now. Uh, and it is pretty much a Hellfire with a beefed up guidance section. So we have a lot more capability now. Uh, still the same range. Uh, but it gives us just more capability uh, with the new missile and that was developed between the army and us and we've been using it for the last couple of years now uh yeah very good uh, can you talk a little bit about your partner helicopter i would call it the uh1y over here yeah of course it's right here across i'll just give a quick look that's right across the, the parking lot here the expo footprint and uh these two different aircraft are quite a team generally almost always traveling together I exactly believe, so if you've ever together. seen us fly you've probably noticed that we always have a cobra and a huey together uh, it's called a mixed section uh, and it's just because of the different capabilities we have it, it offers us a robust mission set so we consider us kind of like the gunship we carry all the missiles the huey can also carry rockets and guns as well as the guided and unguided rockets but they also give us that unique capability of being able to actually move people so inserting and extracting personnel and dropping them off into zones and they train a lot for that and they're very, very good. Uh, so we always fly in a mixed section, I would say, unless there's a specific mm -hmm. mission we're going for. And it just gives us that unique capability of carrying personnel, dropping them off, and then being able to actually integrate with the ground personnel. Yeah, and I believe the uh, they're very similar airframes in the fact that uh, as far as maintenance, there's they are. maybe 70, 80% of uh, the parts are similar. I don't know, you, you know maybe more. Roughly 83 to 85 okay. parts compatible 
which was a great selling point for Bell because they gave us two platforms and we can pretty much you know, use the same parts uh, to service them. And they might look very different, but in reality, a good portion of the helicopters are identical. The weapon system integration is a little different on the Cobra because we carry more weapons, but other than that, most of the parts are the same. The rotor, blade, uh, rotor blades uh, and a lot of the uh, internal components are all the same. Yeah, very good. Do you mind if we go on the other side and just look at the weapon systems that are on the other side? Because I know there's a few different ones than uh, we just looked at. So I was, as I was mentioning earlier, the bigger pod. So we, this gives us a capability of carrying 19 versus the 7. So you'll usually see this one on the Cobra. It just gives us that, that greater capability of carrying more rockets. Very cool. So these will be unguided rockets only in this pod. It's uh, the shorter pod. And then here we have our aux tank. Uh, gives us roughly another 20 minutes of uh, time on station for fuel. So usually you'll see us have a aux tank on. It's a uh, pretty standard loadout. Okay, so that gives you just 20 minutes of extra time? Roughly, yeah. Uh, can you talk about the flight time without that of this aircraft? Yeah. Is that okay to talk about? That's I fine. Mean, yeah. What would normally uh, be the flight time? On we have a, a pretty good capability here. We can't do uh, any uh, in-air refueling. So a lot of what we do is uh, called FARPs, Forward Arming Refueling Points, where we'll land to a spot, they'll bring out fuel pre-staged as well as weapons, and they'll load us up again and then refuel us and then we'll go back out uh, for our time on station. Uh, so usually, depending on where we are, we can go about two and a half hours uh, time on station. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, I mean, there's two pilots. Are you both uh, both referred to as pilots yep, in this exactly. uh, aircraft? So, a lot of people think that there's a designated pilot and a gunner. In reality, the seat and this seat are identical. So usually you'll have one person flying it and one person running the mission and the weapons. But whatever I can do in the front seat, the back seater can do as well. Uh, can do you ever see one pilot flying this, or is it always no, two? We always work in two. tandem. Okay. Uh, and that's just because of the the workload. You can't really fly the aircraft and be running the mission at the same time or running the weapons uh, because you need to be working the, the FLIR in the front looking for targets and that's a very task saturating job. So one person will be focused on that while the other person is just either orbiting or setting the aircraft up so that he can find targets. That was awesome. I appreciate you taking the time. Could I ask you just a little bit about uh, your experience uh, in the Marines and maybe what you may plan to do whenever you are out of the Marines? That's how, what this what this might prepare you for as far as civilian type yeah, work. Yeah, so that I've been in since 2016. I've been flying the Cobra for the last three years. Uh, I have a couple more years left, and after that, I will hopefully stay flying. I would love to keep flying the Cobra. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much, I, I don't really want to leave it yet. Uh, and then after that, we'll see. I, at this point, I've already done 10 years, so maybe uh, continue in another 10. Well, it seems like 20 is the magic number. I yeah, don't really know much number. about it, but that seems like you get there, and that's uh, a big difference in the in your retirement, and, or however you want to look at that. And I, I've known people that have gone in at 18 or 20, and by 38 or 40, they're retired after 20 years, and exactly. yeah, that's a pretty good gig, then going into the civilian. Plus, I get to fly this thing. Yeah. Uh, military aircraft, are, the job itself is a lot of fun. It's a great job getting to support the Marines on the ground and then seeing them. Uh, so I'd rather fly military aircraft than commercial aircraft right now. So I'll keep flying as long as they let me. Oh, I'm happy to hear that because I know we could use uh, good pilots to stick around. Uh, with you know recruiting being, I believe, is recruiting much of an issue for this to fly this type of aircraft? I would say uh, recruiting is pretty good for, for us. A lot of people do want to fly the Cobra and the Huey. Uh, so it really has been an issue for us. And I guess I'll just ask you one last question. Would there be something you would go up to from here in a helicopter and want to fly? Or I really don't know what that would be, but I'm just... No, no uh, okay. so for us, once you get your platform, you pretty much stick with it. You can cross over and then go back to training and train on it. Uh, but I would say the close air support mission, uh, the stuff we do, that's really what I want to keep doing. So I think I will... Uh, at least for the foreseeable future, I will stick with the Cobra. Well, good. I feel great to have you as part of our, as part of our military, as, as part of our, as part of the Marines. Uh, I really appreciate what you do, and I just want to uh, thank you for your service and shake your hand, sir. Yes, sir. My pleasure. I appreciate your time. You, it's really uh, very much appreciated. And thanks for your service. Of course. Thank you, sir.